Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, beloved, I want to welcome you to yet another episode of Glen Podcast, uh, the official podcast channel of Global Emancipation Ministries, Calgary, Canada. I want to appreciate the name of the Lord for the privilege He has granted us uh, to be alive once again, to witness yet another week in the land of the living. And I want to also appreciate God for how He has blessed us in time past by making His word available to us as well as the grace to apply them for testimonies. I want to appreciate him for all the testimonies he has generated in our lives and of course the ones he's still going to generate. May the name of the Lord forever be praised in the name of Jesus. I want to appreciate you for taking time to also listen to this uh, podcast channel. It's because you are there, that's why we keep coming. I want to appreciate you for taking time to listen and also to apply the principles being shared via this particular platform. It's a prayer that your testimonies will keep manifesting and you will not lose any of your rewards in the name of Jesus. Our mandate is still liberating men through the knowledge of the truth. That's what we are called to do and that's exactly what we are doing by the help the Lord provides uh, through this platform. And of course, among many other platforms, uh, he has helped us to generate. And uh, that's why I want to encourage you to subscribe to this podcast channel if you have not yet done so. Uh, you can subscribe on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or other uh, listening platforms available to you, depending on the device you're using. Um, it's important to subscribe so that you don't uh, miss out on any episode the Lord might be sending to you specifically. Or uh, you can also do you can do that if you want it to be easy you can just type in glenn podcast on uh, on your google search box and just click on search it will bring up all the platforms available so you can just choose anyone uh subscribe and keep listening from there the lord will bless you as you do that in the name of jesus if you wish to learn more about our ministry you want to know what we do who we are where we are working a vision uh you want to learn more about the ministry just visit our website at www.glem.org that's www.gloem.org. Uh, you'll be able to have um, access to all the information you wish to have concerning us. And I want to encourage you to also follow us on social media. You can uh, connect with us, check us out on Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn. Connect with us, like our pages, follow us on this uh, social media platform so that you can keep abreast of fresh uh, spiritual updates as they become available. And especially so you can be partaker of the daily meditation. That is being shared on these uh, platforms on a daily basis. As you take advantage of all these uh, opportunities, you will be blessed mightily in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's another week, and another week means another episode, and uh, the Lord is said to bless us again. So this week we're going to be considering a very important um, topic. But before we go into the episode proper, let's uh, take a moment and commit this uh, session to the hands of the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you glory, honor, and adoration for who you are. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for your power. Thanks for your wisdom. Thank you, Father, for your knowledge. Thanks for making your knowledge available to us. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for qualifying us to be among the living. Lord, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. We thank you for everything you've taught us in time past, and thanks for what you are still going to teach us today. Lord, we commit uh, this session into your hands. We pray, Lord, you give us understanding. You give us fresh insight into your word. And you make our heart fertile soil to receive the implantation of your word. So much more that by the time this episode is over, we look back and have all the cause to glorify your name. Thank you for always answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Uh, so, like I said, um, this week... It's another episode and we're going to be looking at um, a topic that is very important to our lives. A topic that we definitely transform our lives upon application. So we're going to be considering be still. We're going to be looking at be still. That's the topic for this week's episode. Be still. Okay. And uh, we're going to take our text quickly from Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, we're going to be looking at 35 to 39. Mark chapter 4, 
we'll be looking at 35 verse 35 to 39 and i'll be reading uh, from the king james version of the bible it says on the same day when the even was come he said unto them let us pass over unto the other side and when they had sent away the multitude they took him even as he was in the ship and there were also with him other little ships and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full and he was in the inner part of the ship asleep on the pillow and they awake him and say unto him master carest thou not that we perish and he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm may the, may the lord bless his words in our hearts in the name of jesus when it comes to obtaining assistance from god concerning any issue of concern please pay attention pay, pay close attention to this when it comes to obtaining assistance from god concerning any issue of concern only him is permitted to be awake it's very important you understand that if you are interested in obtaining assistance from god concerning anything at all in your life concerning any issue of concern in your life and the lives of others there's a problem you want god to help you solve <laughs> there's a problem that you need assistance from god to be able to solve you want to you want to attend to an issue and you need god you need assistance from god if you don't need assistance from god don't pay attention but if you want god to help you you need you want to obtain assistance from God concerning any issue of concern at all. Only God is permitted to be awake over that matter. If you are asking him for help and you are still fully awake, in quotes, and when I mean awake, you are still struggling, you are making conscious effort, I mean anxious efforts at getting the problem solved, you are running etas keta, you are confused, you are perplexed, you are disturbed, you are perturbed, you are anxious, you are worried, you are nervous, you are struggling, you are doing all manners of things, just trying to solve that problem. Guess what Jesus will be doing? He will be sleeping. He will remain inactive concerning that matter and it will be looking at you until you are exhausted that is the way it works have you ever wondered why the bible says in matthew chapter 7 verse 7 matthew 7 7 have you ever wondered why the bible says, ask and ye shall receive have you ever thought about it how come you are not permitted to receive until you have asked Somebody will say, does God not know I need this thing? God knows. He knows you need it. He knows. But his principles have to be followed. He knows you need, the, he knows you need help. But he is the one who said, if you want to receive, learn to ask. The Bible further says, ye have not, because ye ask not. So if you are there struggling, you know, you are there fully, fully, fully engrossed in all manners of anxiety. You are worried, you are thinking, you are troubleshooting, you are brainstorming, you are running at a skater trying to solve that problem. The Lord will remain asleep, in quotes. He will sleep until you are fully exhausted. That's the way it works. If you want him to help you, then he's the only one allowed to be awake over that matter. He doesn't need your help. He doesn't. But if you go ahead, if you go ahead and wake him up, like the disciples did when the storm was threatening their lives according to the text we just read, and you choose to be still while he works on your behalf, you will soon be sharing testimonies. That is the way it works in this kingdom. Notice, when the disciples were bailing out water, look at the text we just read. 
the storm was raging the disciples were running bailing water the bible said the waves was beating to the ship water was everywhere they were struggling they were they did all they could do they couldn't solve the problem it was so obvious their ship was going to capsize to the extent that they had to say when they when they went to wake him up they went to because jesus was sleeping all the storm everything why they were bailing water why they were struggling why they were you know confused they didn't know what to do again jesus christ did not wake up he kept enjoying his sleep when they were fully exhausted they didn't know what to do again and they now went to him say master carries thou not that we perish they woke him up say ah sir are you not bothered that we are dying he rose up rebuked the wind and commanded the sea to be still and that was the end of the storm that was the end of the storm so meaning all the efforts of these disciples so far was not necessary it was not necessary they labored unnecessarily the anxiety was in vain their worry was not necessary it wasn't if they had done what they now what they did last if they had done it first they would have saved some themselves some stress if you had ask the lord to attend to the matter of your life that you are now struggling with it would have been solved a long time ago but now your bp has increased now you have worried to the level that you are now living on drugs to step down your blood pressure and you say you have a savior somewhere why are you not asking for help ye have not because ye ask not ask you shall receive every man that asketh receive it the very next verse it was until they woke him up that was when the problem was solved but while they were trying to solve it on their own they were sweating in vain the job of the helper is to help the job of a helper is to what is to help and the bible said the lord is the present help in time of trouble it's not absent it's not far away the lord is your present help in time of trouble and the job of a helper is to help is to help so why are you struggling instead of engaging the ministry of your helper it's very important if you want god to help you you have to learn to be still you have to learn to be still you have to learn to you know you have to tell yourself i will not be nervous i will not worry over this matter i will not be anxious i will not struggle you have to let the lord and do it his own way why you sit down still and watch him do what he does best look at the children of israel if you remember when the children of israel came face to face with the red sea the lord told them through moses to be still go and read exodus 14 they were afraid because the red sea was right before them the host of the egyptians were coming behind so either way they were dead if they rush into the red sea they are dead if they wait where they were uh, and the children i mean the egyptians they catch up with them they are dead so it was a dilemma rush to the red sea dead stay the egyptians catch up with you you are dead they didn't know what to do so they cried out to god they cried out to God. What did I say? They cried out. They told, they cried out to Moses, cried to God. Moses also cried to God. Everybody cried to God. And God spoke. The present help in time of need, in time of trouble, spoke. He told them. He asked Moses to tell them, be still. Be still. That's, the, that's what the Lord told them. And before they knew what was happening, the Red Sea had parted. The enemies of 430 years were drowned. Right there. Let's read it. Look at Exodus chapter 14. Let's read it in, um, from KJV. Exodus chapter 14, 13 to 18. Let's read the account so you see what, we're talking, what I'm talking about. Exodus 14. We're going to read 13 to 18 from KJV. And Moses said unto the people, that was what, that after they had cried to the Lord, Fear ye not, stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. 
for the egyptians whom ye have seen today ye shall see them again no more forever the lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace you know the meaning ye shall not struggle ye shall calm down ye shall not be anxious ye shall not run a task calm down and see how god operates now and after saying that the lord said unto moses wherefore thou i mean cries down to me speak unto the children of israel that they go forward but lift up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it and the children of israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea and i behold i we add in the arts of the egyptians and they shall follow them and i will give me honor upon pharaoh and upon all his hosts upon his chariots and upon his horsemen and the egyptians shall know that i am the lord when i have gotten me honor upon pharaoh upon his chariots and upon his horsemen that's how god did it god told them just calm down relax relax and watch me i am the lord just calm down and watch me and before they could say what was happening red sea had parted something had never happened before the bible said the water was like a wall to the left and a wall to the right it was like movie they've never seen it before in their life water became a wall water solidified right and left and dry ground appeared in the midst of a sea ah can you do that one what level of anointing can be upon your life what struggle what level of worry can you engage that can part a race jesus said by worrying you can't change the color of your you can't turn one white one black hair to white so why worry why worry you can't increase your size by worrying you can't grow by any inch just by worrying worry achieves nothing Worries like driving rigorously without leaving a spot. You are sweating, but there's no progress. That's what worry does. He says, stand still. Don't rush. Don't do any, don't run anywhere. Stand still and see what I do. See me in action. The Egyptians saw Red Sea part. They saw the Red Sea have been parted. They also went inside. I mean, Oh God, when God wants to deal with your enemies, is it takes away their thinking capacity. How can you drive into Red Sea that had just been parted? Can't you think? They were not thinking. They saw the children of Israel walking on dry ground. They too, they followed with their horses and chariots and everything. The Bible says, my Bible says, God removed their will. He removed the will from their chariots. In a modern day language, it's like God removing tires from the enemy's cars. So they were driving rigorously in the midst of the rest of the way. They couldn't move again. Before they knew what was happening, they said, ah, let us run away. God is fighting. They, they said, they said it. They said, God is fighting for this. Let us run away. It was too late. They were already in the midst of the rest of the And God released the water back and they were drowned right there. Not one escaped problem of 430 years was solved in a jiffy that is the god who is asking you to be still you can't do what he does you can't you remember uh, in second chronicles 20 when the when jehoshaphat was faced with some enemies uh some three nations came together to come and fight jehoshaphat jehoshaphat did not know what to do Instead of struggling and gathering army, he cried to God, God help me. He, wo- he, wo- he woke him up. Let me use that language. He went to him and woke him up. Lord, only you are allowed to be awake over this matter. I can't do anything. And the Lord told them to be still. Calm down. <laughs> you watch what I'm going to do. Just get some choristers together. Let them be singing. Let them just praise me while I'm walking. Oh my god let them just praise me let them let them sing all right let them sing about the beauty of my holiness let them just don't shoot any gun don't 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 go and gather any ammunition all i need is tambourine you know drums some nice musical instrument just praise me the lord told them you will not need to fight in this battle the battle is the lord's he said you i don't need your help just praise me that's all i need sing and that's what Joshua did. 
he told everybody in the entire land of Judah, we are not going to fight, we are going to praise God. God said he doesn't need us to fight. We are not going to lift any weapon. It is not necessary. Be still and know that I am the Lord. He said, don't, don't bother. You won't fight in this battle. Guess what God did? God set an ambushment against the three nations that were coming against Jehoshaphat. The three nations faced themselves and they started fighting themselves. The one nation attacked the other. The three nations faced the until they killed one another. No one remained. Probably the last man standing would have just pointed one gun to his own head and killed himself. The Bible said they helped. I like the way the Bible told said they assisted each other to destroy one another. They helped themselves to destroy themselves. Why? God was the one fighting. So the I mean, Jehoshaphat and the entire Lord of Jehovah, they were just watching. By the time they got to where they were, they were already dead men. The Bible said, behold, dead men everywhere. They all died. They killed themselves. And I see that's not enough. They were coming to battle. They were coming with silver and gold. They were coming with the prosperity and all the wealth of their nations. Have you ever seen any that, anything like that before? People going to battle and carrying the wealth of their nations to the battle. That's what those three nations did. Because when God is fighting for you, your enemies can't think. They brought prosperity to battle. So after killing themselves, all the wealth of the three nations, it took Jehoshaphat and the men and the children of Judah three days, 72 hours, gathering wealth. They were gathering wealth. They were gathering wealth. Battle came against them. They became prosperous as a result. Can you see that? But guess what? If they were the ones fighting, running, uh, trying to shoot, they would have suffered casualty. Somebody, they would have died unnecessarily. But they cried to the one who can fight without involving you. And the Lord fought their battles for them. So while they were waiting, God was walking. Be still. I put it to you. The reason you are still struggling over that matter in your life is because you are still awake. You have not really allowed God to be the only one awake over that matter. Two of you cannot be awake. Get it right. You have to be still while it's working. That's the way it works. It doesn't need your help. But if you are the one doing all the working, you are struggling, you are anxious, you are helping him to worry, your worry will continue because he won't do anything. That's what the Bible says. Say, be still. He took care of the Egyptians in a jiffy, in just one moment. Remember also, when Adam, uh, Adam was lonely, when he created Adam in the Garden of Eden, he said uh, all the animals had companions and he said, oh, it's not good for man to be alone, right? Adam had a problem. Adam, Adam was lonely. There was nobody like him. He was the only man alive. And God said, no, I'm going to do something. I'm going to solve his problem. Guess what God did? God put him to sleep. Look at your Bible. You can read Genesis 2, 21 to 22. Adam had to be put to rest while God worked on his problem of loneliness. It was while he was asleep that the Lord took one, took out one of his ribs and formed a woman for him. Genesis 2, 21 to 22 say, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. When was the problem of Adam solved? Was it when he was worrying about future partner? <laughs> was it when he was worrying about who is going to be my wife? It was when he allowed God alone to be awake. The Lord put him to sleep. God didn't need his interruption. The Lord put him to sleep. Finished the work. By the time Adam woke up, beautiful Eve. I picture Adam saying, wow. Because if he had said, this is the flesh of my flesh, the bone of my bone, he must have been wow. Say, look at this beautiful woman. He said, you will be called woman because you are taken out of man. He be, one moment, he was lonely. The Lord put him to sleep. The next moment, he was saying, this is the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh. He was married. There is no problem the Lord cannot solve. 
if only you will allow him to solve it. Only one person is permitted to be awake over your matter. If you are awake, the Lord is asleep. If you choose to sleep and be still, if you choose to remain calm and be still, the Lord will get up, arise on your behalf and solve your problem. I've given you scriptures, nothing less than three or four examples. And the Bible says from the mouth of two or three witnesses, every matter shall be established. Three to four scriptures confirm what I've just told you now. I gave you Mark chapter 4. I gave you Exodus 14. I gave you 2 Chronicles 20. And I've just given you Genesis 2. All these scriptures point to the fact that when you allow God to do his thing, when you remain still, when you calm down, when you refuse to worry, when you refuse to be anxious, when you refuse to struggle, he arises on your behalf and he solves the problem. I want to beg you, stop hindering God by your anxious moves. I'm begging you. Has he ever worked? Why not stop? Stop hindering the work of God. Stop hindering God by your anxious moves, by your worries, by your being nervous. To enjoy his intervention, you will have to be still and know that he is the Lord. According to Psalm 46 verse 10, Psalm 46 verse 10 say, Be still and know that I am the Lord. Be still and know that I am God. He's still the Lord. So that's the word of God for you today. Stop being anxious. Stop being awake, in quote, concerning your matter. Be still and allow God to walk. And by the time you see the way he walks, only one thing will fill your mouth. Testimony. When the Lord walked for the children of Israel, Israel according to Exodus 14, by chapter 15, guess what? The Bible said they sang a new song. It's my prayer. As you allow God to take care of your matters, beginning from now, you also shall begin to sing a new song in the name of Jesus. That's the word of the Lord for you today. Be still and know that I am God. If you are still there, you have not surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. This is the very best time to do so. God doesn't fight for his enemies. He fights against his enemies. Don't forget, it was the same Red Sea that parted for the children of Israel that drowned the children of Egypt. The Lord opened up Red Sea for his own children to cross over and he closed it upon his enemies. So you have to belong to the Lord if you want the Lord to fight for you and not against you. He destroyed three nations and delivered Jehoshaphat and the land of Judah. Why? Those were his enemies and he preserved his friends, his children. It's very important. Very important. So you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ? You're going to say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I cannot help myself. And that's why I need your salvation. Please come into my life today. Wash away all my sins and set me free from every bondage that sin has attracted into my life. I confess you as my Lord and Savior today. Please write my name in the book of life and help me to live for you alone from now onward. Also fill me with your Holy Spirit and don't let me ever become a powerless Christian. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, thank you. Because you are the God who answers prayers. Thank you because you do mighty things for us when, if only we can be still. Thanks for all the things you have done in time past and thanks for what you will still do. Lord, be exalted in the name of Jesus. Concerning all my listeners, I pray for as many of them who are still anxious, who are still worried and nervous, struggling over one matter or the other. Father, today we declare that we shall be still and you will arise and solve those problems in the name of Jesus. Father, as my listeners decide to be still beginning from now, go ahead and walk on their behalf in the name of Jesus. 
and for your children who have decided to surrender their lives to Jesus, Lord, I pray that you accept them in the beloved. Wash away all their sins, wipe away their names from the book of death and write their names in the book of life. Beginning from now, as they remain still, Lord, walk in their favor as well. In the name of Jesus, get rid of every form of worry, anxiety, you know, struggle in the lives of these ones in the name of Jesus. And together, let us enjoy your very best. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, if you said that prayer of salvation, I want to congratulate you. You are born again now. You are not born again and you are a new creature. All things have passed away and all things have become new. And including your worries. Your worries have passed away, okay? Don't go back to them. Now let the Lord take care of you. He's your helper. So if you want to learn more about this new life, I want to encourage you to grab your Bible and start reading it. The Word of God is the avenue through which God speaks to man. That's one, that was one of the very first ways to hear from God. Okay? So read your Bible and pray every day. Alright? Uh, you can start with the, you can start with the book of John, uh, Gospel according to St. John. Read the entire, entire book of John. You will understand how this new life is to be lived. And also to access more materials that can help you grow and develop in your Christian journey, uh, visit our website at www dot gloem dot org www dot gloem dot org uh, there are wonderful materials there uh, all manners of publications and resources that can help you become well established in the lord visit the site and take advantage of all these uh, resources for your own spiritual advancement uh, if you also want to be part of a uh, weekly online bible study and we actually recommend you become part because that's an avenue to study the word of god together with other brethren to fellowship together which the lord commands uh, you can just uh, click on the link on the on the banner. There's a there's a banner on top of the home page of the website. Click on that banner. Uh, the banner will take you straight to the room where the meeting is being held, and you'll be admitted into the room. It holds every Sunday, 5 to 6 p.m. Mountain Time. The Bible study holds every Sunday via Zoom application, 5 to 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and uh, you can just coming from anywhere any part of the world once you have internet access it's, it's typically it's actually entirely online so just click on the link and uh, you'll be in the room the lord bless you as you take advantage of that also in the name of jesus uh also feel free to follow us on social media uh you can follow us on uh, facebook twitter uh, instagram uh connect with us on linkedin as well just Connect with us on any social media platform available to you. As long as you find the name of the ministry, uh, you search it out and you find it, they follow us, like our pages. This will help you to keep abreast of our spiritual updates and uh, resources as they become available. And also the daily meditation that's been shared on this platform, uh, you'll be able to assess them. Daily meditations are being released every day on these social media platforms and you can just go to any of them and pick the word of God for the day. Uh, as you do that, your heart will be loaded with the word of God and you'll be able to live a victorious Christian life. And that's going to be your testimony in the name of Jesus. I want to hear from you. We want to hear from you. So if you want to reach out to us for anything, prayers, counseling, uh, you need uh, you didn't help in any area concerning your Christian journey, you want to say hello to us or probably you just want to find out how you can be part of what the Lord is doing through this ministry, uh, kindly send us an email through um, info at glim.org. You can send us an email. Our email address is info at glim.org or simply drop us a voice message using the same uh, platform you are listening with now. As soon as we hear from you, you're going to respond and we really appreciate if we can hear from you. Uh, your feedback is very important to us. The Lord bless you mightily even as we expect to do that in the name of Jesus. Uh, thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of uh, Glenn Podcast. If you have been blessed by this uh, particular episode or probably the previous ones, I uh, want to implore you to share with others around you so that they also can be partakers of what the Lord is doing uh, through this ministry. And as you do that, the Lord will reward you mightily in the name of Jesus. We'll be here again for yet another episode by next week if the Lord has not returned. Until then, next week, keep enjoying your freedom in Christ Jesus. God bless you. Bye.